1965 Chevelle Station Wagon. Coming up next on Monster Hobbies, What's in the Box? What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello once again, model car builders. Welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies What's in the Box video, where today we're going to be looking at a really cool wagon. This is the 1965 Chevelle Station Wagon by AMT. Ertl, and this was a buyer's choice model way back in the day. Really cool wagon. I think it's come out again under round two. So before we begin this video, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first one to join me opening up boxes and saying, ooh, that's cool. <laughs> All right, let's get this video up to 100 likes so that everybody knows about it. And now let's go down to the surf wagon woody place and open up the box and see what's inside. In 1965, Chevrolet set a new record in what was a banner sales year for all of Detroit. And this nice little Chevelle wagon is one of those great old cars. The Chevelle actually started in 1964 and was a reply to the Ford Fairlane. It was pretty conventional in design, front engine, rear drive, front coil springs, rear leaf springs. It offered almost as much interior room as an Impala, but within a more sensible exterior dimensions. In effect, Chevelle was a revival of the ideally proportioned classic Chevy of 55 to 57. So, AMT brought this out in the Buyer's Choice Award program in 2001. This, of course, was an older kit, as we uh, know, <laughs> somehow. Anyway, um, this one is a skill level 2 for ages 10 and up. You need to glue and paint it. And uh, there's 100 oops, plus parts. You can build this wagon one of four ways. As we will see when I turn the box around, you have a 327 cubic inch V8 engine with optional dual quad setup, stock and custom wheels and tires plus drag slicks, custom rear and front treatment and a roof rack. For, yeah, you can build it one of four ways a crew car, stock, custom, or drag. And finally, Paint and cement are not included. And here you can see a rear view shot of the wagon. Now, unfortunately, though, in the front view, whoever built this model just painted this blue right across. This should actually be the uh, Chevy logo with your red, white, and blue inside of there. But I won't hold that against anyone. Okay, this is 125th scale. And now let's just pull the lid off move that out of the way to see our beautiful instructions here. Now, as you can see here, I bought this at PMS Hobbies, October 12th, 2001, for $17.99, which is a pretty expensive ticket back in the day. Now these are retailing up in Canada for about $34 a model. <clears throat> yeah, <laughs> inflation, anyway. So, the instructions are quite large. They fold out into four panels. And then, of course, it opens, you know, long ways like this. So, as we can see, we've got a nice artist illustration of the wagon, including those Krager style mag wheels. And uh, now, Let's just zoom this in a bit, so bear with me. Okay, try to fit this to frame. Right about there. Nope, there. Okay. So there's plenty of options to the Chevelle wagon. It has the, uh, and <clears throat> pardon me, the larger 327 Chevrolet engine quite a nice piece here. You have your valve covers going on there, the cylinder heads, the engine block, the oil pan. Uh, 
This is uh, the drag edition of the engine. So I'm assuming stock is on one of the other pages here. Anyway, you get this nice bug catcher injector and your supercharger, as well as the exhaust headers and your supercharged drive belt, the fuel injector pump, and the chromed front cover. These pieces are chrome because they've got the uh, 300 numbers to them. Your exhaust headers, they recommend painting flat black. You get this nice supercharged manifold here, as well as a distributor. <laughs> a big finger pointing to step two down here. <laughs> and yeah, your uh, oil pan, starter on this side, oil filter on that side, and so on. Let's find the stock engine here for a minute. Ah, there it is on the back. And you also get this great history here of the 65 Chevelle wagon, which I will not read here. And our important tips for building the model, using your hobby blade, where to cut off the parts from the parts tree, using your tweezers to hold parts while you apply liquid glue. And of course, liquid glue into there. And a nice section here for advanced model building tips, which I'd like to cover in some other videos in the future. <laughs> okay, so here is our 327 stock engine. It's also saying you can use this for your um, crew wagon for the drag strips. So you have your air cleaner and your little carburetor there, your oil filter, your intake manifold, Again, the valve covers, the cylinder heads, the exhaust manifold, which they are calling out to be painted silver. Although I have seen these painted Chevy engine red as well. Your oil pan, your engine block, your pulleys, your fan belt, your alternator, and your <laughs> exhaust manifolds in that. And now here is the custom engine coming up. All right, and in your custom engine, you have dual carburetors with these two nice little chrome air cleaners, a distributor, intake manifold for the dual carburetors. And you'll know it's the dual carburetor one because it'll have two squares up here, whereas the other one will have a single one right in the center. The other one being the stock one. Your valve covers, again, exhaust manifolds. Here they give you a chrome uh, front cover. For your timing chain as well as oh no there's no as well as these are the stock pieces but they're going on a chrome one just to dress up your car a bit now let's see where did we get to okay flipping back around to this section it shows our stock tires going into the firestone tire a staple of amt kits it seems <laughs> And then you got your stock wheel cover going in there, the nice uh, wire spokes. Not really wired, they're just pressed in. Um, how do I describe that? <laughs> it's a hubcap. Anyway, uh, there's the custom crew wheels. You can see the Chevy bolt pattern in the back here. They're using the Goodrich radial TAs and the Krager mags. It could be possible that you could use the radials instead of the Firestone bias belted tires, or bias ply even. Uh, okay, getting into the drag, drag racing. We have our wheel back and our Krager mags in the Firestone tire. Now, since Krager mags are like five, <coughs> five spokes in here, they're hollow in the center, so you will have to paint inside here. And they recommend painting the wheel back in body color. You could also paint it black if you want or even red. Anyway, there's our extended wheel back going into the Goodyear Slicks with the extended Krager Mags going in there as well. And then here we have spare tires. This is for the drag racing truck. These would go on the roof. Uh, there's a special special piece for them to fit into. We have our wheel backs here, the Goodyear Slicks, as well as steel wheels, factory style steel wheels. And then you can put in this sunken rim in here as well. Uh, 
and here we have car ramps to support the front of your car up for your diorama so you can have somebody working underneath it. This car ramp and the ramp supports. And finally we show on this page. The finally for this page is the chassis assembly where the engine just drops nicely into the chassis which is a solid pan with the two location pins so you can have the front at stock height or lowered. So let's see. Okay. The chassis is basic in this. It's just a pan with your exhaust pipes and everything molded in. Your manifolds would come to the edges of the exhaust pipes. We have some spacers that you can put on those pins which would um, raise the body up a little bit. Basically, so you could put in the bigger tires, I think, without cutting the wheel wells. Um, press axles into wheels. Do not submit axles to chassis. So these are the old style uh, rod and pin type, or not rod and pin. The metal axle goes through the holes, through the engine block type of thing. This was pretty popular with the promotional model kits and the screw bottom cars. These would be, of course, not pins, but holes in there. So you could screw your car together. The interior is a pretty basic pan. Uh, with the only real option being the drag um, seat belts, the four-point harnesses, and the tachometer. But the rest is basically stock. You got your steering wheel, your instrument panel, the floor gear shift lever, the interior tub, a little panel here to glue to the back for your tailgate. You can see the uh, the sunken holes here for the peg and post style, which was uh, again sort of a promo model kit feature. Some of these AMT kits were promotionals, and then the AMT added in an engine when the model car builders of the day wanted to do model cars. So it's very possible that the first edition of this car might have come out in 1965 as a promotional annual model. Uh, number five is the body. You've got a battery, your radiator, and your wa <coughs> water reservoir sitting in there. And they do give you some body colors here. Cypress green, mist blue, and Sierra tan. Ah, this is uh, one of the cars with the metal clip. So that's very, um, ah, what's the word? When, when all the clues point to, this would be around the early 60s that this kit came out. So it is more than likely this came out in 1965 as an annual kit because that metal hood clip thing went basically from, well, about 1960-ish maybe even a little earlier in AMT's history, uh, up to the mid to late 60s. Anyway, you, you get an option of a hood scoop on here, which means that there should be, well, we'll take a look on the plastic parts, but there should be uh, indentation lines in here where you could cut a hole into your hood and then glue that over the top. This is an, a good kit if you look down here because you do get the firewall, which was missing from the 1963 Impala kit by AMT. Oh, but I have found out something. Round 2 is planning on re-releasing the 63 Impala, and they've actually tooled up a firewall. So for the first time in... Ooh, the kit came out in, like, 63-ish. And, uh... We're 2019, so... You know, the math. I'll do that a little later here in the video probably posted up in here somewhere but that's a long time without a firewall for a model kit so anyway it shows the body going together the glass inside and the interior assembled interior all pop up into there then we get into section six down here the final assemblies so this is our stock version the assembled body with interior and glass and everything pops down onto the chassis you got your quad headlights in here, pop in, and then your bumper and grill go into the front. Funny, oh, 
Okay, it shows it a little later down. Now, if you're doing the custom, AMT gives you this nice grill. Unfortunately, I'm not sure who makes the grill, like as far as George Barris, Gene Winfield, or any of these guys. So if you know it, write in the comment section down below. Um, okay, the body and chassis pop together the same way. It says, trim to assemble custom pan. It doesn't really show where you're trimming, though. There is a front body pan, a rolled pan that goes in here. And then of course we have our nice chrome end-to-end -end style grill going right across the front of the car. And you can glue in your headlamps into the grill. They do have bumperettes. These are optional micro lights. You can glue in as well. Or instead of your headlights. I do believe that's what they're trying to get at. So now down below that, the custom, you have your drag racing wagon, which it's basic. Again, you put your assembled chassis down here. I suppose or suspect that these would use those raising blocks, the chassis spacers, which would pop into the back here and the front to give you the clearance under your wheel arches for those tires to roll better anyway. And this just uses a stock style uh, front grille with your quad headlights going in, your headlight lenses going into the grill, of course. And now here's the crew wagon. This is what would be out at the drag strip servicing other dragsters. This is probably the, the coolest version of all of these. So you, there's your uh, option, or uh, not optional, extra drag slicks that this wagon is carrying on the roof on this special roof rack you have a flasher here with a, a clear red uh, dome as well as the chrome flashers down below and then of course our stock grill which I've talked about quite a bit <laughs> uh, but here's the other option you get this nice push bar here which is a big piece of wood which glues onto the front bumper and that would be for pushing dragsters up to the start finish lines or even off the track uh, and then they have these nice chrome push bar inserts that pop into these little grooves onto that wooden bumper so finally we've seen how the front goes together and now here's how the back goes together so the back end here is for the stock drag crew and, and crew car. This is the rear assembly. So there are some step plates that glue under the rear bumper. A tailgate trim insert, which goes in here somewhere. Probably right up the middle. We'll take a look on the plastic body to make sure. And then our rear taillights, they're going into the back of the body here. And down below, here's the custom we got another rear roll pan going in there, the tailgate trim, and our rear taillights going into the body. There's also these exhaust tips which are gluing up here on the sides. Pretty interesting. Uh, that would mean the exhaust pipe would bend up and go straight up through the body panels at the back. <laughs> anyway, um, the rear bumperette and a club plaque gluing into that roll pan. And it says a referred to box cover for decal placement. Now, this box doesn't have decal placement instructions, so you're kind of left on your own. Possibly uh, these instructions are reprints from something earlier. So, in that earlier box would be the decal placement. So let's fold up these instructions and take a look at our parts. And now here we have our 1965 Chevelle station wagon. Now I couldn't put it in the frame this way because it's a little bit too long. So I just have to angle this. It's a very nice little wagon for the time period that the mold came out in. You have your 327 Chevrolet engine emblem sitting right here on the front fender, up near your headlights, of course. The door handles are very nicely done. However, one of the things that 
I've seen in Scale Auto magazines is to improve them, you simply drill a couple of little holes in here and uh, make sure you, you keep them away from the front and this part of the lock. Sorry, this part of the lock. But you drill a couple little holes in behind there, making sure you keep this around, you know, and then hollow them out a little and you'll have a typical GM door handle. I can actually show you one. I've got a 72 Oldsmobile out in the backyard. Might actually do that in a bit here. So here's the, your gas filler door, and it's got the nice Malibu molded in here on the rear quarters. Let's just take a look at this. See how the camera and my lighting get together. So there it is there. And there's your 327 emblem with the crossed flags in the front. And now across the back panel here, very nicely detailed is a Chevrolet in the raised letters. And there's your little latch for your tailgate. Uh, okay, and there's the impression here in the car body for that chrome strip that was mentioned in the instruction sheet. And your little sunken in areas for your rear taillights. And then here we have our nice little grill or vents going on here just where the windshield wipers were. Uh, now, getting back to that peg and post for the screw bottoms, there's your posts right there, and of course in the back. Now, the nice part about this is you could actually build your own slot car chassis and then attach it in with these peg and post bits. So that's, of course, nice to have like a racing slot car wagon in 25th scale there's your roof with a little little bit of a raised panel here this of course is a stock gm style roof um, there was a 72 cutlass a cutlass uh, wagon that also had this it was there was a one with a raised one of these things it was a vista cruiser had glass up in here quite a cool one i wish i had it <laughs> 427 Vista Cruiser. Anyway, so there is a body, and now here is the hood with, of course, a Chevrolet full letters right across the front. This was kind of carried through the uh, 60s, the big letters in front. You got some indentations in the hood there, and like I was saying earlier, there's that bigger indentation you would take your hobby blade around here and punch this out for your cut your uh, drag racing hood with the hood scoop and glue it right over top of that hole just so you can see the uh... oh, oh no actually that's because the blower would be sticking up through there so there's a detail and something that's kind of nice on here that I'm just noticing is there's no mold marks most of the hoods that I've shown here upside down, they'll have mold mark pins. Oh, no, there is a little bit of one there. Okay, <laughs> just looked a little cleaner for a minute. So there's one there and one there. A little bit of one in the front here. But they're very, you know, you could almost get away with, uh, with not worrying about them. But if you are, use a number 16 hobby blade just to scrape those down and get rid of them. Okay, so that is our Chevelle body. Now, I'm going to get into the interior tub here briefly. Again, there's our peg and posts going right through. There's mold marks here on your floorboards, which always interrupts with, of course, our texture there for the floor. I'm trying to scrape those out. Anyway, there's our door panels. Some pretty nice detail in them even though this is a, a shallow type of mold because of how they had to do it. And of course we have our front seat with seat belts put in. So this might have been around the first time that Chevrolet actually had the lap belts. Pretty early in the 60s. Seat belts of course were not law in the US, but in uh, 72 they became law in Canada. You had to wear your seat belts. There's uh, 
Okay, this is an automatic car because we have a single, um, pardon me, the brake and the gas pedal right there. So if there's three hanging down, you have a clutch car. And if there's two, it's an automatic. <laughs> All right, anyway, underneath is very good. It's too bad uh, AMT couldn't have put the mold marks underneath, eh? <laughs> All right, so moving on to the chassis. And like I was saying, this is the, of course, the top of the chassis, the part that nobody sees. Uh, well, you do see in the engine bay. Okay, but there's your little pegs there. If you wanted to, you could cut these off, find the center, and then drill through. And then find the right type of screws to screw the chassis into here. I mean, you don't really need to. Of course, because the pins, you could just fill your holes up there with glue, squash it in. You can see the nice fit of the underneath of the chassis to the body. In fact, it's it's pretty perfect for the era of this car. You can uh, glue here in the front and the back, and then just a little bit up the sides. And the sides of the body should snap onto there for extra support in your glue. Okay, let's pull this out of here for a minute. Since we've got this upside down, now we can see the nicely molded in details. So there's your uh, bottom of your A arms and your pardon me, in your suspension. And then we have our nice exhaust going here, dual exhaust coming out the side of the body there and there, which is really weird that in that custom edition they show the exhaust tips way up the side of the car body. Should actually be down low, I would think. Anyway, maybe not. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Okay, so there's your fuel cell, or gas tank, and this little lump here is where your spare tire would be in the back of the wagon. Yeah, and that's actually reflected in here, uh, in the interior, where this side is longer, see, and kind of up high here, and on this side, the uh, the wheel well only goes up to here and then you've got a flat wall going in there i was kind of wondering about that because i was thinking well wait a minute if the tire is sitting up like that underneath then it would take up or it would be sticking up in here in your floor pan but i didn't see something sticking up because huh, it's covered over so did anybody out there have one of these wagons um in, you know, let me know in the comment section below how you actually got the tire out of this. Did Oh, did the panel open up from here? There's a bit of a line there. Open up from here and pop off there and then you could access the tire? Let me know. I'm interested. All right, here we have the engine components. Now, I started to glue the engine block together, that little 327 right there. The sweet little honey. <laughs> but anyway, I started to glue it together. And um, I just noticed that as I was doing this review that it wasn't still on the parts tree. However, I do see something here that does not jive with the interior. The transmission is a standard transmission. Let's see here. Can the camera pick that up? So you can see the little lever or lobes in here which would be hooking up to your gear shift and a automatic transmission is a smooth in here because all the linkages well all the uh... <laughs> <clears throat> So here's our engine components that are on the parts trees here. I do believe I have clipped the trees down a bit just to make them fit better in the box. This model I've had for a long time and I did start to work on it. That's why the engine block here is glued together. Um, otherwise there would be components of it all in these empty holes on the parts tree. 
Now one thing I did notice about the engine here that does not match the interior... Oop. Oh yeah, Gilligan's Island time. All right, here are the... And now we look at our engine parts here. And as you can tell, I started to glue this engine block together. I've had this model for a long time, and I did tend to forget what was going on inside the box for this review, but it's not too much. I glued the engine block together, I will confess, otherwise you would be seeing the parts here hanging off the parts tree, but it's it's a smaller thing, it's not too, too important. Anyway, I did notice something about this engine block that does not coincide with our interior. Now you remember when I showed you the interior tub, I said, here we have our automatic transmission in this car because there's the gas pedal and here is a single brake, right? And uh, in a standard or gear shift type car, you would have two pedals here, one for brake and one for your clutch. The clutch being used to disengage the engine from the rear axle, right? Anyway, so what I noticed here... <laughs> is this is the wrong transmission. This is a standard transmission because here we have the little lobes to connect your gear shift lever to. No, I don't know. There. Uh, focus on my camera here. <laughs> anyway, there it is. Now on an automatic transmission, this would be smooth because the transmission, of course, shifts itself. So all of it is in bands instead of gears inside the transmission. And of course the bands would shift up and down and there'd be a linkage just for you to select which band you're going to be in on the automatic whereas with this these would be moving rods or gears inside and getting them up into different positions so anyway that is what i noticed on with the engine there is a faux pas with amt anyway You'll notice here you get a little bit of the oil pan, and then here's the other part of the oil pan. It's shortened, and that of course is so that when this gets pushed together here, it gives enough room for that front axle to go through the hole. Uh, but there's our starter right there. It's in two pieces. One part is on the engine block and the other half is on the pan, which gives it sort of the wrong shape. <laughs> but anyway, that's all right. And there's our oil filter there, hanging off. Make sure to paint it for Fram, if you like Fram, or green for Kelvinator or something. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I might have my colors wrong, so. Anyway, uh, there's the front timing chain cover with the water pump in there. And our 327 valve covers. Of course, paint it Chevy engine orange. Just move it out of the way. Uh, there's our intake manifold for the dual carburetor. Like I said in the instruction part, it's got the two holes there. And should be flat, whereas our single, single carburetor would be sitting on this one, which has the intake... Um, Air fuel mixture intake pipes going into each of the cylinders or chambers if you want to not call them pipes. <laughs> okay, there's our exhaust pipes, our exhaust manifolds with partial exhaust pipes sticking out of them, which should sort of match up to the ones in the chassis. There's our windshield washer water reservoir, fan belt. I like, you know. I gotta confess, I do like the stock air cleaners, even though a lot of people, you know, replace them with uh, dual chrome ones and, you know, other things. But there's something about, like, the little the attention to detail that uh, GM and AMT, they didn't work together, of course. But, you know, GM built the car first, AMT made the model after, right? But I just like how, how they have the detail in that little, you know, characteristic type of shape to them. There's our battery and of course our belts and pulleys with the alternator fan blades molded on. Oops, kind of moved that out of the way. 
So yeah, there you go. All right. Next here, we have, these are the tops of the ramps for that optional bit. And of course, oops, these are our wheel backs and the fronts for those optional tires with the five bolt pattern GM wheels going on. You can see how nice those are. It is a good crisp detail for the era of this kit. And then here we have the bottoms of the ramps with, of course, the supports in here. You notice that they are angled. Let's see if I can do this properly. They are angled to, you know, position it for the bend in the ramps. So these should nicely line up like that. Giving you the bottom of the ramp and, of course, the tops. And then here is our wooden bumper. And look at the big pegs sitting behind here for the impact coils, I guess they would be. Or at least mounted on your bumper. And this nice roof rack. This thing's really, really cool, actually. Could use it on other wagons if you got them, as long as this will fit into your body design. But anyway, let's check out some of our other parts. So now we have our back seat, our rear seat for the wagon, as well as our dashboard here. And I've applied the steering wheel into the hole, but it's not glued. It's just to give you guys a bit of a visual understanding of what's going on here. Okay, just move this seat out of the way. And let's take the steering wheel out. Oh, but before I do, notice that nice horn ring down here? Uh, a lot of the kits will either have that as a separate piece of chrome, but AMT has actually molded it to the steering wheel. So you'd push on that and your horn would go, uh -uh. <laughs> Okay. Uh, now, there's our instrument panel, and as you can see, you've got your three gauge clusters here. One of these guys is for your um, speedometer, and then of course gas and oil lights, and sometimes one of these would be the clock. I'm not sure, I should actually look at a Chevelle dashboard. <laughs> but anyway, let's just move on here. You've got your AM, FM radio, possibly AM back in that time period. Uh, nice detail here for your glove box. Some of the Fords actually didn't include a glove box. My sister's uh, 1972 Ford Comet was actually a solid steel dashboard all the way across. Don't ever remember it having a glove box. But anyway, nice detail into this um, dashboard. And as you can see, it, it would mount into the sides when you got your chassis going right down into this groove right here and there you go interesting how it tilts up like that and that's actually tight to the body so you've got sort of a, a 45 or yeah inverse 35 to 45 degree angle on that dashboard And of course with your steering wheel sticking in there, which it won't stick in there for me. Well, anyway. Okay, so it's a nice fit into the body, or the interior tub, pardon me. And then our back seat would go in there. And the back seat has that nice detail that matches the front. And notice there are no seat belts in the back. So only the front passengers actually have the safety of the seat belts. But keep in mind, this is an era when... People that own station wagons used to put kids in the back here without any seat belts. So they were actually doing that right up into the 80s. <laughs> Parents <laughs> with wagons, kids getting jostled around in the back, sliding around like uh, pieces of luggage. Anyway, that's your blast from the past. So let's move this out of the way and check out some of the other components. Okay, here's some of the miscellaneous components that are in this kit. Now here we have the bit of the drag racing bits and details here. Now this is kind of interesting. We have our four-point 
seatbelt harness going on here. That would be for, of course, the driver. Now, actually, this should be kind of interesting when you glue this in to your interior bucket because there's already the two belts coming out the bottom here. Notice I put the wheels in the back. Um, there's no kids in the back, though. But anyway, okay, so these two seat belts, when you glue in the four point harness, these ones would be coming out the bottom of the four point, point harness. Uh, the nice part with the bench seat being out, though, is when you do your drag racer, you can have the bench seat out of it. So again, for the lightweight that's necessary in drag racing, there wouldn't be the heavy bench back there. Okay, uh, this panel here actually would glue into the back across here at that mounting point. That, of course, is to hide the back of your car, you know, from looking in the window and seeing that there's nothing there. There's a nice texture on it, and that handle latch is, I know it's not very visible here, but it is right dead center, as it should be. Okay, getting back to the drag bits, there's your big, powerful exhaust manifolds coming out with, of course, the little bit of, of uh, crisscrossing serpent-type stuff going on in there just to get the cylinder heads out into the exhaust manifolds. And there's these two little circles, and they've got a mesh in them. So I'm not too sure if those are actually supposed to be used for carburetor replacement on your air cleaners of your carburetor, you know, just to give it a little bit of a something cool. Or if you're actually meant to glue these on the back. I didn't, I don't recall seeing these in the instructions. So if you saw them and you know what these are, just let me know in the comments below. There's our front and rear roll pan for a custom edition. And here's our firewall. And you'll notice right here, it's a little white square. Now I glued this in. This is sheet styrene that I cut to fit in there. And that is to hide the big gap that that uh, hood hinge would be um, filling up. And if you notice on the bottom of the hood, I actually did cut that off. So I was trying to make this look more realistic to the actual car by doing that. As well as I never got that big cro um, iron spring. And that's okay, because usually I found with those, when you open the hood, it goes flying off. I, I haven't had success in keeping those in the hoods as uh, AMT says, so if you guys know how to do that, let me know in the comments below. Anyway, let's look at our final little bits of the gray pieces before we move into the chrome pieces. And here we have our final gray pieces. These are the little rings that are meant for raising that body off of the chassis for putting in your big drag wheels without affecting your wheel arch. And this, dear friends, is our hood scoop. This just says Ertl, <laughs> if you're wondering. Okay, see? Uh, Ertl. Uh, there we go. Anyway. But there's our hood scoop. And there are some mold marks here, which you would, again, get rid of. You can use a file in here because there's a lot of room in the front, but it, you'd have to clip it off the part tree first, of course. Obviously. Now we get to my favorite part of the entire model kit universe. It's the chrome pieces. I always love them because they're nice and shiny. So here we have our stock Chevelle grill, which is a very nice grill with a little bit of non oil, non oil, pardon me, which is a Citadel Games Workshop paint, which is basically a black wash, very thin. You could paint it in here and it would go into all the cracks and recesses, but leave the top nice and chromey shiny much like the original grill was. You have your parking lights here, and of course your quad headlights there, which, if I'm correct, should be seven inches around, right, on the real car. Uh, let me know in the comments below, because there was also a five inch headlight, which my 72 Oldsmobile has. Anyway, I'm not too sure when the, seven in the five inch headlights and the seven inch headlights, you know, when they kind of came in on which cars because I try my best but I am not an entire expert on some of the details. So here's our hubcaps and this has got that simulated wire into it 
but it could also be just stamped ridges. Anyway, there's our rear bumper with the backup lights in there. This little strip would go into your tailgate. There's a chrome air cleaner. The alternator is sitting here. There's those exhaust chrome tips. The front timing chain cover for dragster, as well as a sun tachometer. And our dual carburetors sitting there. Now if we go up here, you've got your bumperettes, your gear, your floor gear shift lever. Now these guys here, hard to really tell what those are, but they are the custom headlights. The uh, larger lens ones, which would go into your grill. There's your Krager mag wheels with the five spokes. And like I said, you can see, or they are hollow right there. There's my stick going through them. So if you're painting those wheel backs, of course, paint them something that you want to see through there, like red or maybe even black, just to eliminate them. Uh, now these little guys are those micro lights they were talking about in the instructions. Now what was deceiving about the instructions is that they show you putting in the headlights in here, which is okay, and then it says optional micro light, and they only showed one going in there. So you would assume that the micro light would be dead center in the grill. But we have four of them here. So you can stack these one on top of each other. One, two, three, four into that grill. So that's what the instructions didn't show. The instructions also didn't show those little um, circle things with the mesh inside them. So that's where it's sort of like, where would you put those? And they were actually curved in a weird way. So on the back of the um, those little things, they don't actually look like they'd fit on the carburetors because the carburetors would have pins on the top. So builder discretion is advised. <laughs> okay, anyway. So there's our grill. And again, you can fill this with a black wash. You could also even just leave these headlights off because this was the beginning of the era of the flip up front headlights although i know the flip up front headlights were actually on the cord the cord 812 uh you wound them up with a little lever inside inside your um ah, under your instrument panel okay anyway there's the chrome base for the flashing lights for the service truck so that basically gives us all the chrome components sorry i'm not sure what these are Okay, if you know in the comment section below, let me know. All right, let's look at our next chrome pieces. So here we have our GMC blower, or the supercharger, sitting right here. There's the center of it, and your front and rear covers, your manifold for the blower, and of course we've got our bug catcher injector here, and the front of the bug catcher injector. Some of these had three three uh, circle ports this one has four and of course there's our belts sitting there and right here we have our fuel injection pump waiting to pump all that fuel into our blower to get our car going at crazy speeds so anyway let's take a look at our next pieces and now we have our stock gm Firestone tires sitting right here. Now these these are the same tires that have been in dozens and dozens of AMT kits over the past. You can find these things going all the way back to the 32 Fords. And they are the nice old Firestones. And I don't know, is my camera picking this up nicely? It's trying to autofocus. <laughs> so anyway, you have a tread pattern that's basically a series of about five or six lines that just wrap right around the tire. There's a little bit of the pie crust edge to them. And on the one side, they are completely plain and flat. And on the other side, it says Firestone. And that's about it. But the nice thing about these tires... Now, I know you wouldn't really do this on your Chevelle. But on, like, the old Ford kits, there's a ridge that goes right there around the tire. And you can paint with some white acrylic paint your white walls. So these tires are always nice for that. But, I mean, they are 
I guess, authentic for the car and the era. However, the AMT also gives you these nice Goodyear tires. These things are a little more uh, closer to a radial in appearance. Um, they do have that nice tread pattern in there, which of course are not just rings going around the outer tire, but an actual tread pattern of consisting of little squares all over the place. <laughs> So you got your Goodyear with a nice winged boot detail, and you've got lettering down here as well as your tire pressure for inflating your tire. Always remember on your real car to use the right PSI in your tires and try not to over inflate or under inflate to, invo to avoid wear problems. And finally, dear friends, we have these a nice Goodyear blue streak drag racing tires. These ones are pretty thick. Pretty nice. And they have the double ring in here on the tread pattern which you can paint blue. Or if you know if you don't really want to be painting on these tires, uh, Round 2 has released a parts pack with pre-painted tires that you can buy which look really nice. All you need to do is just put these in a tire thingy <laughs> spin them and in your drill and uh, sand off the tread a bit just so that it fits better and to remove the flash that you find on all these tires. Now, <laughs> I know it's not really appropriate to say a tire spinny thingy, but here's my tire spinny thingy. It's actually a socket. It's a 7 16th socket which has a little end here for a drill, an electric drill. And check this out. I'm going to actually push the tire right up onto the socket and spin it. So what you want to do is spin the tire here and get a piece of sandpaper underneath it and spin it until the tread looks nice and sanded. And there you would have your perfectly sanded and balanced looking tires. So next up we have our glass. This is actually the last bits of plastic in this kit. Uh, it's a nice piece of glass as you can see. <laughs> However it has these long rods that attach the front windshield to the rest of the glass which is typical of the early 60s AMT kits. It was sort of a cost-saving measure as well as it does help with the alignment but of course, when you look in your car, when you got it flipped upside down, you're showing all your friends, you've got these big things going right across the roof, which does not look too cool. So you can saw them off right there and there. Take your sandpaper and clean that edge up and cut them off right. You can follow that angle if you want, or just go flat across back here. It should probably look better. There's our headlights, seven or five inch. Let me know. <laughs> okay. And I'm keeping this one in the bag, just so that I don't lose it. There's our two axles for the wheels. Sorry for the glare here. Let's see, maybe I can... Does that help? Yeah, it does. Okay, that's a little dome light for the flashing unit for our service truck. And we've got our two rear taillights. Oh, and one thing you can see on the glass here. Maybe if I tilt this up. There's those two uh, divots for, of course, our rod posts to go through. So that would lock or help to align that rear window into the back. Our final bit of our model kit is the decal sheet. I believe this decal sheet came out in maybe about 1983 because I have had it in a lot of my early kits from when I was building and it's the exact same decal sheet from that era. And it's got many of the major sponsors and producers of car um, bits and pieces actually. <laughs> so we have STP, Valvoline which is oil, Pennzoil, Bell Oil and gas products, Union 76, more so, Goodyear tires of course, Monroe shock absorbers, Peak is antifreeze, um, Pardon me, Mitchell, those are headlights, 
Holly, uh, Champion Spark Plugs, Bliston Shock Absorbers, and of course Hurst Shifters, Mallory Ignition Edelbrock Carburetors, uh, sorry, Manifolds, Winston I'm not sure on. Let me know in that in the comments below. I tried to trace a lot of these things, but goodness. Uh, crane cams, your cams in your engine block. Moog, I believe those are the headlights. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, CV is headlights, or lights in general. Um, there should be something inside here. Oh, Die Hard. That's your Sears batteries. And uh, that's basically everything you get on here. There's no license plates even for this kit. So you'll have to use license plates from some other decal sheet or just drive unregistered. But I wouldn't uh, recommend that on any roads driving without a license plate, you know. <laughs> anyway, these are decals and that should be the end of our review. And that concludes our review of the 1965 Chevelle Wagon Buyer's Choice Edition from AMT Ertl. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching that great video. And man, there are a lot of choices in here, even though the box art does not reflect anything of them. So hopefully you guys can find one of these or get the new re-release from round two to add to your collection. A great diorama piece would go good with those modified stalker kits that I've reviewed in the past. So, and in the future I'll be doing some more too. Anyway, <laughs> all right, so make sure you get this wherever you can. And before we go, once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound the notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to see it. And until next time, well, we'll see you at the pit crew.